Jack, a question, if you don't mind, uh, supposed to be an office oh, hour sure. session. So I uh, discussed with some people interested in testing Alma Linux, but at the moment they use some packages from the CentOS plus repository on CentOS Linux, which will disappear soon. Um, so I was searching on how to contribute some of the patches that we have in CentOS plus repo to do a pull request, but I don't see your Git repository for all the packages. So is that closed at the moment? Yes, so uh, you're gonna hear about that next week. Um, we okay so the background of it is that the build system is coupled with cloud linux's build system and so we basically had to decouple them from each other so that they're one you know one build system for whatever cloud linux wants to do and then we have our own public um build system so um pieces of it are already on github but uh not everything so we're actually in the process of doing it and we uh i don't know if uh, eugene eugene is our uh release engineering uh, lead Jack. who told me that he was going to be in here um i don't know if he's in the chat or not but um if you are you eugene, uh, i don't know if you want to say anything about it uh jack yep I have a little bit of an Alma Linux civics question. So how is this thing governed by the community? Who runs it? Who leads it? Who who controls Alma Linux, the entity of Alma Linux, you know, the project? So who controls it? The Alma Linux Foundation controls it. And um, we have a board of directors in place now that include uh, myself, that include uh, a couple of other... Um, uh, like well, it's 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 myself it's uh igor who is the ceo of cloud linux and eugene who is the head of release engineering cloud linux. he What's also that? works for cloud linux and then um we also have uh simon phipps who's a former president of the osi and uh jesse asklund who is the v i believe he's vp now or director of customer success for web pros which is the company that does cpanel and plesk and then um, we have Benny Vasquez, who is the uh, community person at Chef. And so it's like a balance of uh, people inside, people outside. And hopefully what our plan is, is that um, within a month or two, uh, we can actually hold elections and the Cloud Linux people can fall away. And we can bring in outside community members so that uh, community can actually help uh, with the governance there. Uh Jack, what is this Cloud Linux? I've never heard of it. Yeah, what so cloud, cloud Linux. Linux uh, was someone going to answer? No, I was just saying, what is Cloud Linux? Yeah, so basically Cloud Linux is a company that uh, produces a rebuild of RHEL. And uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff added into it. Um, it targets specific um specific sectors so like one of them is vps providers web hosts um stuff like that and uh Education. they were uh the ones that started the project um and they actually gave the founding grant to the foundation so that we can get the foundation off the ground and have money to operate so um these what happens is um so you're taking rel and you're rebuilding it as well, but what, do, what, instead of, besides just making RHEL and putting a white label on it and saying, oh, look, this is the generic equivalent of RHEL, here you go, like what CentOS was, um, are you doing anything different besides just saying, oh, look, it's the generic unbranded white label version of RHEL, are you doing anything different so that you don't just have just, just a generic white label, anything else can make generic thing? Well, no, I mean, I think we, we aim to be uh, a white label in a sense, because a lot of people rely on that white label to exist for different um, workloads or different workflows or different things they do. So, um, you know, a, a lot of people are not comfortable with uh, using stream and so they'd rather go with uh, something that has stable point releases. And why um, would somebody? You know, that's why would somebody want generic? Why don't they? Why don't they? Why do they hold up? Generic. All right. So Paul, let 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 me reframe all of this because mm. What's wrong? this is unnecessarily pejorative. So it's not about genericness or whatnot. Yeah. It, it is really about 
the the fact that for Red Hat Enterprise Linux as a, as a product to exist and for all of the stuff that we enjoy in the community to be uh, to be possible, um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, oh, the binary for it are are part are gated on a subscription, and so you you agree oh, to a contract in which you don't you don't reshare those unless you want to have your contract uh, expire and you lose uh, access to future updates. Thanks, however, Neil, for the however uh, let me finish so everyone else understands. Uh, so, however, Red Hat graciously, they don't have to do this, mind you, like the GPL obligations do not require them to do this, but they make the sources freely available for everyone. They push it out onto the public internet and anyone can inspect it, look at it, modify it, and distribute any builds based on it minus the red hat branding which is actually all clearly marked and clearly well understood clearly um so the the thing is um for a lot of folks um it is difficult to acquire red hat enterprise linux they can't necessarily afford yep. it and this is something that red hat is finally starting to address so you see more and more programs about making Red Hat Enterprise Linux available in more spaces for more people and more use cases and more and more things. And and that's great and all, but there's still this yeah, segment no. of folks that they no. cannot no. be served. No. And no. this is where home users can get like 50 licenses for free and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, so, not, not everyone can use that. There right. Are, like, so what, uh, what a new startup company, company that doesn't have money, for example. Right. And, uh, and there are limitations as well, because so, for example, if you want to, you know, a natural part of the business is if you want to build a product that you have to, you know, do tight integration where you're making heavy modifications and stuff, you want to have top to bottom ownership of the stack. This is actually the original reason CentOS existed more almost 20 years ago was that the company that previously relied on Red Hat Linux and made heavy modifications of it wound up having engineering and tooling to be able to build a Linux distribution. And so they did. Uh, and over time, you know, you know, these people have moved around like Cloud Linux is the number one of those companies that does that sort of thing. And they build a Linux distribution built on the user space platform, but with their own customizations and such for supporting their use case. And that is Cloud Linux OS. Now, fast forward to now where like Cento, classic CentOS Linux is going away in favor of CentOS Stream. Uh, a more inclusive, more engaged type of project as a whole. Um, some people uh, either have misinformation or don't fully understand what that means, or like have you know different requirements or whatnot. Yeah, these things make it so. These things are what make Alma Linux attractive in that sense. And Alma Linux, their value add to the chain is that they keep they bring a value in making it the Red Hat ecosystem more accessible to people in, in environments where maybe they can't necessarily get rel. They can't necessarily use CentOS Stream for whatever reason. That keeps them in the fold. And the added value for Alma Linux, that for having Alma Linux in our ecosystem versus many of the other community rebuilds and whatnot, is that they actually have engineering resources that they turn around and provide value to the rest of the ecosystem by contributing back through CentOS Stream through Red Hat and to Red Hat engineering in other means and have direct relationships where this stuff like works out for the benefit of everyone. Yes, and that, and so it's not really a question of is it generic Linux or white label Linux or whatever. No, every Linux distribution that does their own branding is a branded Linux distribution in their own right. They have their own values, merits, philosophies, and so on. Like you wouldn't like okay, I if you turn on the generic branding in Fedora, you do have generic Linux, but because it's literally called generic Linux. But other than that, this is it. It is basically it's not a question of whether it's a white label or whatever. It is a question of, is it is it similar to Red Hat Enterprise Linux in providing you the same user experience that you want and need? And in this case, uh, at, at, a, at a price point that some that some can only afford, which is nothing. Uh, and and Alma Linux provides that that offering. That's and, very nice of them. Yeah. So now they're not doing it for nothing at all, because, you know, the aspect of this is this still this is valuable for the community. It builds reputation, it builds quality, it builds an ecosystem. And Cloud Linux still has to build that Linux distribution to serve Cloud Linux OS. Pulling that out and making it Alma Linux also benefits them because it brings a larger community of folks 
using and contributing and validating and, and using and allows them to share fixes and things like that. And that makes the whole yeah. ecosystem stronger. And so that's really what this whole, whole uh, thing is about. It's not generic white label. It's still, it's, it's all community project. So that makes sense. So Jack, thank you, Neil, for explaining. Um, uh, Jack? Sure. I'm wondering, um, is Alma Linux, um, like does Alma Linux support all the same technologies as Red Hat? Does it have anything that's added like does it have any extra repos and extra stuff that Red Hat does not have? Well, for right now, one thing that we actually just put out a little while ago is uh, live, some live media. So, um, you know, things like that, um, that we, places that we can play around in without um, hurting our uh, compatibility to upstream is where we'll do things like that. But, um, but um, you know, in, in, in terms of the distribution itself, I don't think anything there will ever deviate from what RHEL is. So RHEL is commercial. Alma Linux is a respin, uh, the same exact thing without the branding. It's accessible to everybody. And I'm wondering why did CentOS decide to go to a like a lower tier version of Fedora, something in between RHEL and Alma? Well, and well, it's not. It's not. It, it, they didn't go to a lower tier version of Fedora. Um, I think that this is something that a lot of people um, have a lot of confusion about. And I see Neil chomping at the bit to, to, to jump in. I wouldn't but, mind uh, answering this um, one. In, in, in the most basic answer, um, I think that one thing which people don't realize is a lot of people, and by a lot, I mean a seriously a lot of people were using CentOS, but not contributing anything back to the project. Even if they wanted to contribute, there was no avenue for them to do that. It was what? a closed book where you get what you get and you don't get upset. Yep. And, like um, yep. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was problematic for a few reasons. And the most basic reason is that that's not how a community works. You, in a community, you don't just consume and don't give anything back. And I think that what Red Hat was trying to do, and now, again, not going to say this didn't piss a lot of people off. A lot of people got pissed off about it. A lot of people still misunderstand it. But what Red Hat was trying to do was try to take what they had, which was a bunch of people that were just using it and not giving anything back, and turn it into something useful where people now had an avenue in which they found something wrong and could actually help make it right. Whereas before that was not available. Yeah, why would so, why is everything why is everything closed books with CentOS? Why did people not want to contribute? Why did people just treat it like Windows? Because oh, it was I mean? it was basic it was basically downstream. Yep. And so there was nothing that it, it, it you're basically getting a finished product. Let me jump in here, right? Jack. And the you're you're saying yeah, it, go ahead, you're, you're saying it very politely and kind of sugarcoating it. I'll I'll be a little bit more blunt. I'm a very <laughs> person. Uh, before CentOS Stream, CentOS as a community project was a failure completely. There was no way to contribute to it. For the the extent of the community was a few wonderful bless their souls, a few helpful individuals <laughs> in IRC and on forums telling people, okay, well, here's how you, you know, set up that piece of software. Oh, you found this bug or this doesn't work. Uh, well, that's what it is. That's how it is in rel. You can buy rel and, you know, file a support case if you want to get it fixed. And that was the extent of the community. There was no way to influence the distribution. Really. Uh, we had SIGs, but they were, they had very low participation and very low uptake. Uh, a lot of the SIGs were just uh, rel product groups rebuilding and testing their next version in CentOS. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, but because of with CentOS moving to be, be being a community of consumers to a community of contributors where people can actually contribute to CentOS in order to get changes into RHEL, that change in itself means that the new rebuild distributions like Alma can be more successful than the classic CentOS ever was. Yeah, because um, there's not because it's not 
because it's kind of funny. It's like, why are people? Is why is there an invasive species count of consumers? Why are there so many consumers in the community? Why aren't we getting more contributor consumer contributors? Why are there so many consumers? Why aren't they contributing? Okay, okay, Paul, well, Paul, Paul, Paul. The 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 core answer here is that at the nicest way to put this is that there's a ten to one consumer to contributor ratio, uh, generally speaking. Roughly 10 to 1, sometimes 100 to 1 if you're wildly successful. Um, but the thing about CentOS is that from the early, early days, uh, when people wanted to get involved in the project and help and contribute in that sort of thing, uh, they were rebuffed. And, and the culture became such that there was no desire within the project leadership this is pre-Red Hat. All of this is pre-Red Hat. Uh, there was no desire within the project leadership to make a community out of it that where people could contribute and build it up and stuff like that. For various reasons that I'm not going to get into because they're not important and they're dead and gone. Today, uh, one of the, well, not today, but when Red Hat acquired the CentOS project, one of the major goals there was to build a pathway for supporting a contributor community around the enterprise Linux ecosystem. So note that I said enterprise Linux ecosystem and not enterprise Linux itself. That was That's a very important distinction. Yep. The special interest groups yep. and such like that were copied over from Fedora uh, to provide a way for the upstream projects that make rel Red Hat products built on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, an avenue in which they could develop and, and, and provide to the community at large using CentOS as the base, because that way they could avoid giving RHEL for free to people. Um, now, fast forward a few years, it turns out that that strategy is a failure because people don't, people don't really have the ability to build things without being able to modify everything that it builds on. And so what we wound up having was a ghost town of special interest groups that basically are shills for Red Hat product teams that wind up uh, doing whatever the heck they want on top of it and then have back channel efforts to get stuff done inside of RHEL that get pulled back into CentOS that ship within the thing. And that's just like not effective. Um, on top of that, you have like basically no interest from anyone in the wider community to do anything with the CentOS project. And your bus factor keeps, uh, your, or your lottery factor keeps, you know, whittling down and down until you get to like one. And that is not great for a project that is supposed to be uh, successful as a community enterprise operating system. Mm -hmm. When there's no community around it, you don't get anything. So yeah, a, dr a, drastic change, a drastic change had to happen. And so that was the introduction of the CentOS Stream sub-project in 2019. That whole point of that was to reinvigorate the the ecosystem and and shift the focus from building around to building into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And that strategy was only partially successful in the sense that it got a non-zero amount of contributors, uh, but the general attitude around the project, that particular sub-project was um, met. And in, in general, it didn't really address yes. anything. With that all set as context, there is, then it becomes very clear that there is no interest by Red Hat in CentOS as a project as it currently stands. So something had to change. And again, don't work for Red Hat. Don't know anything. I am just speculating out of my butt here. Uh -huh. The your, your two choices basically wind up being either CentOS changes or CentOS dies. Because it makes no sense for you to like basically stick a fork in your own product by giving it away without giving a way to have differentiation. And there's no no value in supporting this thing if there's nothing to get out of it that benefits Red Hat as a company and the ecosystem at large. And so I'd like to elaborate on that point. Had to give. Yeah. Uh, so okay. elaborating on what you're saying about motivations, uh, the old CentOS under the old model, it uh, Red Hat acquired uh, Aqua hired is what we say. Like they hired all of the CentOS core contributors and acquired the trademarks in 2014, I believe. And 
that was to provide a platforms for all those all those rail products to have SIGs to uh, develop on. But as far as the core distribution itself, there was no in, no incentive for uh, we've famously been understaffed, and there was no incentive for Red Hat to invest in in the staffing for building CentOS under the old model. We're changing that with the new model, where all rail developers are now becoming CentOS developers. And they, Red Hat is incentivized to staff up the CentOS efforts properly. That is the big benefit from our side, moving the, you know, the, the white label rebuild work outside of the company provides a big benefit because other companies that, that see more value in that than Red Hat do can invest appropriately in it more than Red Hat ever would themselves. Uh, Carl, so um, can I go? Okay, so um, so Red Hat is, so so the Red Hat developers are CentOS developers. So what do you mean by that? All Red Hat developers are becoming CentOS developers while developing uh, Red Hat. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a little bit confused on what you mean. Yeah. So so before uh, there so before there weren't really CentOS developers. There were a few of us engineers that were rebuilding the rail package sources. If there was a problem that reported to CentOS, we would just say you know. Is it, is it reproducible on rail? Then we're bug for bug compatible and there's nothing we can do. We don't even understand this source code. We're just, we know how to rebuild RPMs and deliver and compose a distribution. Whereas the individual rail maintainers that are responsible for writing the, uh, a lot of times they are participating in the upstream projects. They are partic they're building, writing those spec files in the first place. They are now, uh, whereas before they could just look at Fedora and rail and ignore CentOS entirely. Now they are actually participating in CentOS and they are the CentOS maintainers for that specific package. The CentOS engineers are still involved in putting the distribution together, but now we actually are working with the RHEL developers that are, that are subject matter experts on those individual packages that uh, we're getting them involved and they're answering CentOS bugs now rather than us just throwing our hands up and saying, we don't, we don't know what this is. We just know how to, re we just know the RPM rebuilt correctly. Yeah. Um, so rel is not rel. So um, so what hey. makes? Hey Paul, yeah. I just want to cut you off. I think we're a little bit over time, and there are other sessions. So I uh, let's uh, let's pop out of here, and maybe we can uh, meet in the hallway or something like that. Uh, I actually uh, I got to take my kid to the doctor as my wife is frantically texting me. So. <laughs> Um, what I'll, I'll, I'll pop in. Let's move to the hallway. Yeah, so stop stop your recording for this one, but we can go to one of the hallway yeah, tracks. Yeah. Yep. I hope your kid feels better. Thanks.